All right, brothers and sisters, welcome again. Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made. And uh, we are going to rejoice and be glad as we study His Word. And in today's Bible lesson, uh, we're going to we're going to answer this very baffling question that people always ask. Can you give us a timeline of Jesus' life? You know, many people always ask, is, is there a way you can give us a timeline of the life of Jesus, like in a chronological way? And thus, this question is the one that you're going to answer today. I hope you're ready, okay? Hope you're ready. Let's get started. All right. We understand that any time, time, or let me just say any timeline of Jesus' life is uh, speculative to some degree. And none of the Gospels present the life of Christ in a chronological order. Rather, most of the materials in the Gospels is, is arranged in a topical order according to those things that each individual author wanted to emphasize. And additionally, the writers include details that are very important to their own themes. So, in some instances... It is very difficult to tell whether similar incidents appeared or happened on two different occasions or if the same incidents is uh, simply told from a different perspective. And none of this should be a cause for concern, actually, regarding the trustworthiness of the Gospels because none of the Gospels claim to be comprehensive biographies And in fact, they are quite short given the amount of time that they cover. You see, one thing you have to understand is that the gospel writers were selective in their material. They give us a full understanding of who Jesus is, what he taught, his significance for us today. But they do not give us a very good understanding of the order in which Jesus did things. Because this was not their purpose. And uh, there are a number of New Testament reading plans that have the Gospels intertwined chronologically. And in the opinion of the editor of the plan, every editor puts his plan according to how he wanted people to understand However, other editors might arrange the events in a different order. And uh, having said that, we, we can understand that just putting this together, we see that there are few events that can be placed within a broad framework. Like for example, John starts with the pre-existence of Jesus in John 1.1 to John 1.3. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning. You see, that's that's a long time before it all happened here on earth. Okay? And also we see Luke speaks of the birth of Christ in Bethlehem and the visit of the shepherds that, that very night in chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2 speaks of the visit of the wise men to the infant Jesus in Bethlehem. And all in this we assume that this visit was at a later time than the shepherds because by the time they arrived thinking categorically we can see that Mary and Joseph were living in a house already and in Matthew chapter 2 we also see uh, the rage of Herod and the escape of Mary, Joseph and Jesus to Egypt where they stayed for an unspecified time. And uh, when the threat was over, they returned to Nazareth where Jesus grew up. So there's 
basically only one incident which is mentioned from Jesus' childhood which is the trip to Jerusalem where Jesus' parents lost track of him. And when they finally found him, he was in the temple listening and asking questions to the amazement of those who heard him. Do you remember that in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 41 to 52? Let me read for you just a bit. The Bible says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, they returned. The child Jesus started behind in Jerusalem. Mm, just a minute. Just a minute. Let me let me reread this verse again. Yeah. Let me continue. Verse 43. And when they had fulfilled the days they had returned, the child Jesus started behind in Jerusalem and Joseph his mother knew not of it but they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance and when they had found him not they returned back again to Jerusalem seeking him and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers this this just a general understanding of this. And verse 48 tells us, And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee be, be, uh, sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Was you not that I must be at my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. So even them, they did not even understand what Jesus was saying. Because, uh, yeah. So this is uh, uh, one of the incidences. And uh, the next incidence found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Luke is the baptism of Jesus immediately, uh, which was followed by his temptation in the desert. And this seems to be the official beginning of Jesus' public ministry. This is followed by the choosing of the disciples and the beginning of an itinerant ministry. And during Jesus' life, he spent a lot of time in Galilee, which seems to have been where he was headquartered. But he often took trips to Jerusalem for feasts. Of course, we can have this assumption that Jesus' ministry lasted approximately three years based on the number of times Jesus went to Jerusalem for Passover. However, even this is uh, also speculative as there is no guarantee that every Passover that Jesus observed is uh, recorded in the Gospels. So, it was during these visits to Jerusalem that he often came into conflict with the Jewish leadership. He performed many miracles of healing and feeding, but again, the Gospels arrange the material thematically without attempting to give a true uh, chronology of uh, events. All the while, Jesus is gradually revealing himself to the disciples and also preparing them for his death. And uh, later on after that, after a ministry that ranged over Judea, Samaria, Galilee, Jesus finally sets out from Galilee at uh, Passover time for what he knows will be his final trip to Jerusalem. And all of the Gospels give much attention to this final trip and the events that happen once Jesus arrives at the capital. From the triumphal entry to the resurrection, Matthew Matthew spends about 8 out of 28 chapters speaking of all this, the triumphal entry to the resurrection. Mark spends about 6 out of 16 chapters. Luke, 5.5 out of uh, 28 chapters. John, 9 out of 28 chapters. Basically, the Gospels dedicate between one third and one half of their volume to the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. And uh, that final week can be outlined generally uh, as follows 
we can say that uh, the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday extended teaching to the crowds and confrontation with the Jewish leadership culminating in cleansing of the temple Jesus observing Passover meal with the disciples instituting the Lord's Supper after that followed by washing their, uh, their feet whereby we see G- uh, Judas you remember Judas he, where he left during the meal to go and tell the Jewish leadership where they can find Jesus in a secluded spot so that they can arrest him and after that we see Jesus prays in the garden of Gethsemane while his uh, disciples sleep then after that Judas leads an armed guard who arrests Jesus then Jesus has an informal trial before the Jewish leaders who condemn him and take him to Pilate who must uh, ratify their decisions since they do not have the authority to carry out the death penalty and uh after that we see Pilate trying to find a way out so he sends Jesus to Herod since Jesus was a Galilean and Galilee was in Herod's territory all right Herod was in Jerusalem for Passover and uh Herod questions Jesus has him his soldiers torment and mock him and send him to Pilate and uh, Pilate again tries to appease the mob by having Jesus flogged but they still cry out for crucifixion he then offers to release them uh to release either Jesus or the convicted murderer Barnabas and they chose Barnabas to be set free and Pilate sentences Jesus to be crucified so Jesus is crucified on Friday according to the consensus of scholars but this is not clearly spelled out in the gospels some scholars think the crucifixion must have been on Thursday by all accounts Jesus rose from the dead he rose from the dead the following Sunday and uh something we have to understand is that apart from that it's like there's also a good picture here to understand that Jesus appeared to various groups of disciples before finally ascending to heaven do you remember that let me just tell you briefly what really happened in the book of Luke 24 verse 50 to 51 do you remember this account where the bible says uh and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them and it came to pass while he blessed them he was parted from them and carried up into heaven so reconstructing all this into a detailed chronology of Jesus life might be interesting and such a project would undoubtedly immerse the student in God's word but it can also detract from the emphasis of the inspired authors reading the gospels as they were written will allow us to better discern the inspired themes and emphasis together with the an exact chronology of Jesus life that was simply not probably something that the gospel authors or the author i may say they felt it was important to communicate so they had some things that they stressed more so that we can understand you see if we get to understand about these four books is that the book of Matthew was more so to the Hebrew audience whereby it was all about fulfillment of the old testament promised king Jesus was being referred as that king who was already promised and that's why you see there's a picture of thus this is what was said by the prophets this is what was said by the prophets in the book of Matthew and when we look at the book of Mark who was a cousin to Barnabas who wrote uh, this book of Mark he basically wrote this to the gentile to a gentile audience showing Christ as the suffering servant who was coming to give his life as a ransom for many and when you look at Luke the book of Luke who was the beloved physician and also Luke is the one who wrote the book of Acts also he was uh, giving the life of Jesus based on uh, eyewitnesses and he was depicting Jesus as the son of man right the son of man 
he was writing to some guy who was called uh, Theophilus. Actually, nobody really knows who Theophilus was, but that is the same guy he was writing to also the other book of uh, Acts. So he was showing Jesus as the son of man. And uh, the book of John was written by John the Apostle. It was more so emphasizing on the deity of Christ as the son of God, the savior of the world, the word of God. So it was showing the deity of Christ. So we may not really say the chronological way of how Jesus uh, lived his life here was from this point to this point, but we can stress on various points. I think we're going to understand the other part <laughs> uh, when we get to heaven. All right, so hope you've been encouraged and you've been able to learn something. And uh, that's the end of today's Bible lesson. Hope to see you in the next one.